We know that everything in a computer operates on zeros and ones, from the CPU, to the internal memory, to the hard disk, and the motherboard itself, or the SD card. If you're on a mobile phone, we know that everything operates with zeros and ones. But what do zeros and ones mean? Well, zeros and ones are either a charged electronic particle or an uncharged electronic particle, which gives us the zero and the one. Or an electronic pulse would be a one, or a lack of a pulse would be a zero. What's interesting is that we can use the powers of two to convert zeros and ones to decimal numbers that are human readable. Okay, so uh, if I had a series of zeros and ones, as we have here, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, that equals the number 150. Now, we don't have to be too concerned about the math behind this spreadsheet, but um, what we can do, and this spreadsheet is available on Blackboard or Canopy, depending on what you prefer to call it, what we can do is see what happens when we change a 0 to a 1. Did you see that? By changing this 1, by switching between 1 and a 0, we see that we're changing the number on the right to 150 or 151. Okay, because you see the number in the title here is a 1. Now take a look at the place for 2. What if I change that to a 0? Notice we subtract 2 from the number, we get 148. Okay, as a matter of fact, if I zero out every one of these components, you see I'm going to get the number 0. So when we say zeros and 1s, the zeros and 1s correspond to a number that will be summed to make up a decimal number. If I want to represent the number 3, I'll use the number 2 and the number 1, and this is binary math. If I want to represent the number 5, I'll use the number 4 and 1. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. If I want to represent the number 6, I use the number 2 and 4. Okay, and this is what's called binary math because we're using powers of 2. If that doesn't make complete sense, not to worry. Just know that every sequence of zeros and ones will correspond to exactly one unique decimal number. Decimal being 10 based, binary being uh, zeros and ones. Okay, binary being two options, you count with either a zero or a one. Uh, decimal is 10 based. Uh, so we have our ones place, our tens place, and our one hundreds place. So that's how we're able to convert from the language that a computer knows to the language that a human understands. We're able to assign these zeros and ones to different numbers, then we sum those numbers, and those numbers become a decimal equivalent number like 214. So we know that any combination of zeros and ones, or a combination of zeros and ones, equals exactly one decimal number. On the same note, we can take any decimal number and convert it to zeros and ones. So if I put the number 60 here, notice that the zeros and ones line up down here to make the number 60. Okay, so any sequence of zeros and ones, or a sequence of zeros and ones, has exactly one decimal number that matches it. On the other side, any decimal numbers has exactly one series of zeros and ones that it matches to. So it's a reversible operation. If I take a look up here, if I replicate the zeros and ones from down here, okay, if I replicate those zeros and ones up here, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, you'll see that we end up with 60. So I just made zeros and ones that equal 60, while well, down here I took 60 and saw the zeros and ones that make it up. So we know that the stuff that we see on a hard drive, we know that those zeros and ones that make up the, this magnetic platter can be easily converted to numbers, okay? But what do we do with the numbers? How do we get colors out of a number? Well, we have a few options. Maybe we just want the number. Maybe that's what we want. Okay, if we want the number, then we'll say, I want to store this as a number type. Maybe I want to store it as a whole number type. And then we're done. As soon as we get the 60, that represents the number that we want. But maybe we don't want a number. Maybe we want a letter. Well, could we assign letters to numbers? We say maybe A, B, 
C, where A would be the number 1, B would be the number 2, C would be the number 3. If we go all the way down to the number 60, that might be something like lowercase h. So we have to think about case, and case might be important. So maybe this, hero, this, this series of zeros and ones becomes the number 60, but then we say we don't want a number, we want a letter. The number 60 becomes the letter h if we apply it to our map. That's if we want to convert numbers to letters. But what if we don't want letters? We definitely, we've covered numbers and letters so far. What if we want color? Well, the monitor that you're using to watch this is displaying this video is a uh, variations of red, green, and blue. So we'll say maybe red, green, and blue. And it has uh, one byte set aside for red, green, and blue. Now, what is a byte? A byte is eight bits. What is a bit? A bit is an individual zero and one. So if we look at this, this is a byte. Okay, this is eight zeros and ones, that's a byte. So what's the smallest number we can store in a byte? Let's zero it all out, and we'll see it's the number zero. What's the largest number we can store in a byte? And this would be an unsigned byte, by the way. Oops, went too far. 255. The largest number we can store in a byte is 255, if we have all the ones lit up. So for red, each pixel, each picture element, which is a pixel that you're looking at, can have red from 0 red to 255 red. It can hold green from 0 green to 255 green, and the same with blue, 0 to 255. Okay. So, zero red, all green, or zero red, zero green, zero blue, actually makes up the color black. There's no color. All red, all green, all blue, makes up the color white. Let's say that we had zero blue, zero green, and 255 red. That would be a pure red. Okay? So, uh, what if we had, what if the number that came out of our operation here came to 255 and we say we want to interpret that as red, as the color red. Well what we're going to have to do is run 255 on the scale between 0 and 255 and that will tell us how red that pixel should be. If it's 0, no red at all. If it's 255, it should have all red. If it's the number 60 like we had before, it would have a little bit of red. Okay. And red, in combination with green and blue, is what makes up 16 million different colors that a monitor can display. Okay? Similarly, let's go the other direction. What if we had a pixel and we wanted to see what color is in the pixel? We wanted to store that pixel. We want to save this picture. We're going to have to take the red, green, and blue, figure out the decimal equivalent, and then we're going to have to convert that decimal equivalent to zeros and ones. And then we save those zeros and ones on some kind of persistent storage, uh, if we're saving it as a file. So either on our hard disk or on our SD card. So from a color to the components of a color, the red, green, and blue percentages from 0 to 255, to zeros and ones, and then store on to disk. So think about that. If you have a picture... You have a picture, and let's say it is 1024 by 768. Okay, whoops. Expand this just a little bit so we can see. Okay, that's the number of addressable pixels in a 1024 by 768 picture, which is quite a few. Okay, now remember that for each of those, we have one byte for red, one byte for green, and one byte for blue. So let's take that number and let's multiply by 3, okay? And that is the number of bytes required to store that image, okay? So if we look at this, uh, that for that image uh, looks like it's about uh, 2.3 megabytes, so a pretty good-sized image if I'm reading the decimals here right, which I might be off by a little bit. 
Now, there are ways around that. We can do things like uh, GIF or JPEG or PNG compression. Uh, and that's where we look at, uh, that's where, first of all, we don't necessarily have to store 16 million unique variants of color because the human eye can't detect that much. Secondly, we might look at a, a row of the same color and instead of storing each pixel individually, just say this pixel and the 10 that follow are all the same color. So we do have compression, but you see that size image can take up a lot of space, which is why I say my old Packard Bell computer from college wasn't really meant to uh, store a large media files or anything like that. Think in this video, think of all of the unique frames, all of the unique images that you've seen in this video, uh, plus my voice on top of it, the video can get quite large uh, by the time I upload it. So uh, that's about what we're looking at for a storage mechanism. The next thing that we're gonna wanna look at is, okay, so how do we tell it whether we want a number or a color or a letter? How do we tell the computer what we want? So I'll cover that in my next video when I look at debugging through an application and watching the data come back. And for that, I'm going to do something fun. We're gonna look at the plant places search by color. Uh, and I'll just show a little preview of this video to come up. I'm gonna pick this image, which is a red bud tree. And then what we're gonna see is it's going to select uh, the top 16 colors of that image. Now, uh, we're not going to look through every line of code, but we are going to do a little bit of debugging and just kind of get an idea of how it takes a picture, converts it to colors, takes those colors, and then converts it to a number that it can search against. So we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.